open up your spirit. I've not come to talk to your flesh. Your flesh may be asking questions. I've come to talk to your spirit by the spirit of the living God. That it is time that you've been around this mountain long enough. It's time for you to arise. It's time for you to go forward. It's time for you to move to what God has for you in this land of America. In the name of Jesus. It's time for you to have that milk and the honey. It's time for you to be all that God has created you to be. In the power of the name of Jesus. It's time to arise and be the sons of God. It's time to arise like Daniel in this America and be the solution to the problems of America. It's time that you and I are not in the minority, but you are needed and you are called for. In the name of Jesus, by the power that raised up Jesus from the dead, you will be sent for. You will be needed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are not going to be remaining in this place. By the power that is in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. I am nothing without you. I surrender to you, Holy Spirit. I surrender to your power. You are covenant keeping God. You are a covenant God. You are the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the mighty God of Israel. I honor your presence in this place. I revere you and I bless you. I thank you, Jesus. I'm grateful, O God, to stand and to speak as the oracle of God. Spirit of the living God, you are a barrier breaker. Anything, oh God, Lord, that stands between the word and the heart of your people, Lord, remove it in the name of Jesus. Let your word make our lives a target. Let your word like a hammer. Let it shatter the hard places of our life. Let there be healings tonight. Let there be deliverance tonight. Let there be transformation tonight. Let there be a change tonight. Let Jesus be glorified. You said if I lift you up, you will draw men and women unto yourself. I lift you up, Jesus, my Lord and my King, the Son coming King, Messiah. I lift you up, Jesus. I lift you up, Jesus. I lift you up, Jesus. In every eye that behold you, let there be healing in the name of Jesus. Every disease in this room tonight, I command your name to bow to the name of Jesus. Because Jesus has been given every na a name that is above every other name. That the mention of the name of Jesus, every day shall bow. Every witchcraft, every sorcery, every sorceress, every occult, every diabolical power, every marine witchcraft, every Jezebel, every power of the wicked one, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I lose liberty into the atmosphere. I lose the power of Jesus into the atmosphere. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I declare liberty in this place. Anyone in bondage, I lose you in the name of Jesus by the finger of God. Spirit of God, do what no man can do. Do what I cannot teach or preach. Operate by your Holy Spirit and I give you liberty to do so. And let Jesus be glorified. Everything I do must glorify Jesus. And I hide myself in the cross as I preach your word. Let there be no hindrance. Let there be no distraction. Let there be no stupor in the powerful name of Jesus. Lord, I bless you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. In Genesis chapter 1, the Lord Jesus Christ was manifesting himself in the Trinity. Because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Trinity came together, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And they said, let us make man in our image. And so that tells us the intention of God in that phrase. Let us make man in our image. The intention of God was to have God on earth. 
The intention of God was to have people like him on earth. The intention of God was to do, was to have people who can replicate, who can do exactly what God can do on earth. That was the perfect plan of God. That was the intention of God. That was the determination of God. And we saw that that was ruined in, in the Garden of Eden. And when that was ruined, there was a problem. But it was not a problem for God, it became a problem for man. Because anything God is determined to do in your life, he will do. No power can stop God. Whatever God is determined to do, he will do. He is God. It does not matter. They can take your picture wherever, they can do voodoo, they can have eggs, they can have scales. But the Bible says, no weapon formed against you will prosper. On the day God has decided to be your God, he will come for you, he will deliver you, and you will manifest in exact position how he wants you to manifest. So the Lord God Almighty said, okay, this was destabilized, but it didn't change the plan of God. The first Adam fell completely. And so the image of God was not glorified as he would have intended to. And so the Lord God Almighty had to do it over again. That's why I love God. It does not matter how many times you miss it. He will give you another chance. He, his mercy will give you another opportunity. He's a merciful God. The Bible says seven times a righteous man will fall, but seven times he will arise. You will not stay down. You will still be the image of God on earth. You will still manifest of God on earth, and you will still do everything God intended for you to do on time. Because you see, God is not limited by time. We are worried, oh, I'm 40, I have not yet married. I'm 50, I haven't done this. I'm 60, I haven't yet done that. But no, God came in the beginning. We didn't know what time it was. As God came, God put his mark and said, in the beginning. And that's how it began. Anytime God shows up in your time, that's your beginning. And he will make sure that you fulfill your purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. You will fulfill your purpose. You will not miss your purpose. God is here to make sure that you fulfill your purpose. But the problem is, the church was supposed to be the God that manifests the sons of God, that manifests people that look like God. But look at the church today. The church today does not look like Jesus. There is a problem. The head of the church, Jesus, is here. The body of Christ on earth is doing another thing totally. But in these end times, there is going to be an alignment of the body back to the head. And when that alignment happens, we will be like the God that we serve. By the power that is in the name of Jesus. Because God has four purposes to want to reveal the sons of God on earth. He has four purposes. And those purposes, they cannot be stopped. It can look like it's been delayed, but it's not going to be. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The purpose of God for your life may be slow, but it will come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. It will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. If you have the Bible, turn with me to Romans chapter 5. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans chapter 5. From verse 12. It says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sin for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed where there is no law could everyone please sit down please verse 14 nevertheless Death reigned from Ada to Moses, even over those who has not seen, according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who is to come. If you have a Bible and it's yours, you can underline that phrase. There is an Adam that is a type of Jesus who was to come. Jesus is going to come in you, in I, and we will be his likeness and his image on earth. And the Bible says in verse 15 that the great free gift 
is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense, grace of God, by if by one man's offense many died, much more grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through whose sin. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many resulted in justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned through one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through Jesus Christ. You and I are meant to reign in this life through Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one man's offense judgment came, resulting in condemnation, even though through one man, righteous acts, the free gift has come to all men, resulting in justification for life. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, and also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. And so we found in this passage of scripture that when everything was destroyed in Eden and the first Adam died, God came with a better plan. He came with a plan of redemption. Now, God did not come with a second Adam. Please hear me. If God has a second Adam, then there will be a third Adam. But when Jesus Christ came, the Lord called him the last Adam. Meaning that it is finished. Every work of righteousness, every holiness, every work of redemption, everything that Jesus Christ gave to you and I, nobody can take it away from you. Nobody else is coming after Jesus. Nobody else is compared to him. He alone is God all by himself. He is God. Then beside Jesus, there is no other God. And so God is assuring us that though the purpose was missed in the Garden of Eden, and Adam could not manifest as a son of God, God said it's never too late for me because I'm always on time. I came back and I gave you a last Adam. And that last Adam will make sure that you fulfill your purpose. That last Adam will make sure that you and I will not be bankrupt. We will fulfill our purpose in the name of Jesus. You know the Bible that we are standing upon tonight in Romans chapter 8 verse 19. It says the, the earth is groaning. The earth is waiting. Is earnestly expecting the manifestations of the sons of God. You will manifest in the name of Jesus. It's only a question of time. You will manifest. It may be as a nurse. It may be as a doctor. It may be as an IT. It may be as a pharmacist. It may be as a housewife. It may be as a mother. It may be as a homekeeper. You will manifest God's purpose. In the name of Jesus. Because God is not man to lie. If he says it, he will do it. He cannot lie. By the fact that he says it, he will be. You and I are created in the image of God, we shall be in the image of God. That's why the psalmist said, he said, do you not know that ye are gods? He said, if you are gods, why do you die as an ordinary man? Put your right hand on your head and say, I will not die ordinary. I will not die ordinary. Bless your head in the name of Jesus. Say you will be a person of history. You will be epic. You will be colossal. You will be mighty in the land. Say I am blessed by the Lord. In the name of Jesus. You will fulfill your purpose. God cannot lie. He cannot, he cannot, he cannot lie. There is one thing God cannot do. He cannot lie. Do you know the second thing God cannot do? He cannot fail. If he says it, he will back you. And heaven backs you tonight. In the name of Jesus. I don't care if you have green card. I don't care if you don't have work permit. So was Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were in a foreign land. They did not have their papers. But faithful located him. Faithful will locate you. God will locate you. God will lift you up. We are the sons of God. We are the salt of the earth. We shall manifest in America. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Sin is trying to push the church into a corner. It will not be your portion. Sin is trying to make the church 
should be quiet. But you know what, church? All of that didn't bother me. Do you know what God warned me about tonight? He said, tell my people to beware of religion. Religion is what has the capability to do the same thing the same way over and over and over and over and over expecting different results. Help me tell your neighbor that is the definition of insanity. You do the same thing over and over. That's religion. Religion prepares you for the earth. But the kingdom of God prepare you to own the earth, Amen. to dominate the earth. Amen. According to Genesis 1.28, that God places you in dominion. Psalm 8 says, who is man that you will think of him, that you will be mindful of him, that you will make him a little bit lower than the angel of the Lord. Who is man? But God considered you and I, and he made you in his image and he says over this earth you are the boss you are in charge you are in control by the i don't care what the devil has told you i don't care what your bank account says i don't care if you're about to be evicted if you are a christian you are in charge if you are a christian it will turn around for you if you are a christian it's only a matter of time if you are a christian god will come for you the bible says that he rides upon the wind to reach you as long as you can breathe in oxygen that's how close your miracle is your miracle is as close as your next breath your miracle is closer than your next breath in the name of jesus shout hallelujah shout hallelujah shout hallelujah we don't serve a weak god we don't serve a small god we don't serve Buddha. We don't serve Allah. We don't serve Confucius. We don't serve the dead small God. I serve Jehovah. I serve the mighty God of Israel. His name is Jesus. He is the Elohim of the Lord. He is the Elion. He is the Shaddai. He is the Rainmaker. He is the Dead Raiser. He is the Miracle Worker. He is the Power and the Fire over the Red Sea. He is the Husband and the Boss of Pharaoh. He's the one that slaughtered Goliath. He's the God that raised up Lazarus. What is it that he cannot do? There is nothing. Judges chapter 6 verse 13. You don't have to turn there. Just write it down. They were asking. They said, where is our God? They said, where is our God? They said, we've been praying. And we've been waiting. Where is God? But do you know what God is saying in heaven? He's saying, where is my Esther? Where is my Deborah? Where is my Joshua? Where is my Moses? Where is my Elijah? Where is Paul? Where are the sons of God? But we all like cowards backed into a corner. Let me tell you something. It's no longer fashionable to be in the closet. Homosexuals have come out of the closet. The sons of God need to come out. You need to come out. You need to manifest. You need to show the power of God. You need to be on your job. When they say there's a problem, tell them, let me go and fast and pray about it. And come back like Joseph with a solution. You are the solution. Say, I am the solution. You are the solution. God has made you the solution. Jesus did not die so that we can be wimps. He died. That we might rise to be the fullness of the sons of God. Put your right hand upon your head and say with me tonight, whatever, say with me, whatever will not let me manifest to the fullness of God's potential over my life. Let it die now. Let it die now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your pockets. There are gods you tell them stay there, they can't move. 
not my Jesus. Oh, not Messiah. And Jesus Christ is not coming back for a weak church. He's coming back for a church that is in control. Like the Acts of the Apostles. And that's why this thing is so relevant. That's why if one person walks away from this conference and you are changed, it has been well. Because God doesn't deal with crowd. He deals with us one on one. One on one. I pray to 12,000, I pray to 50, I pray to 12, and I pray to 10. It doesn't bother me. Just give me one person to change. Give me one person to believe Jesus. And I don't know who God has sent me here for tonight. But there is somebody here tonight that God is willing to move you if you are ready to drop the old. If you are ready to abandon your thoughts. Like the woman in John chapter 4 that Jesus Christ encountered. The Bible says that she left her thoughts and she went to preach in town. You need to leave the past behind. You can't do two things at the same time. You can't drive like this. You can't go forward and backward at the same time. Let the past go. Let the bitterness go. Forgive and forget. It's a new day. It's a new season. Let God manifest you. Let God exalt you. Let God promote you. It's too late for all these rubbish people that are running around doing. It's the time and the season for the manifestation of the sons of God. You know the religion is the greatest enemy of the manifestation of God's kingdom on earth. Religion. Religion says put on a black beret, put on a black glove, wear white apron, wear total neck in the summer, wear white socks, wear this. Everybody is the same. Do you know what that is? It's called demonization. It's not denomination, it's, de it's, it's to be possessed by the same demon and all of you do the same thing, the same way, going nowhere. It is what makes you different that makes you marketable. Yeah. 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 Not what makes you alike. Yeah. That's why you should never copy any human being. Yeah. Copy the master. Yeah. Copy the master. Yeah. Copy Jesus. Imitate Jesus. And your pastor imitates Jesus, imitate him. But you are not supposed to be a cheap counterfeit of another human being. Yeah. You were created to be a son of God. Hear me, church. If you grow tomato, because tomato sounds like potato, can you rip potato for tomato? No. So, if you are born again, by whose spirit are you born again? By whose spirit are you born again? So, if Jesus gave birth to you, whose are you? You are a son of God. You are a son of God. And today is the least you will be in your life. Today is the least you will be in your life. Today is the least you will be in your life. In the name of Jesus, you will rise up to your stature. You will rise up to who God created you to be. You will rise up and you will be all God created you to be. You are unstoppable. You are unkillable. You are unquenchable. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, I command the finger of God 
to lose you. I release the finger of God to lose you in the name of Jesus. Enough with this mess. You go to church, there's one person with one humongous table here, there's one dumb and dumber, the man and the cousin and the children that I see the church is their family tradition that must be inherited by them. No, it's not the church of any man, it's the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Religion will not say don't go to church. Religion will not say don't fast. Religion will not say don't clap your hand. Religion will simply say, do not change. Don't change. However, in my Bible, check yours. Psalm 55 verse 19. It said, God hates them because they refuse to change. And so anybody that refuses to change will be left behind. The pillar of glory is moving. The pillar of fire is moving. And the sons of God are marching on. And the gates of hell cannot prevail. I feel the presence of God in this place. Because it's the time for a change. It's the time for a change. We can no longer do religion. I don't know how, but God gave